Yeah. Yeah, fuck it up. Yeah. Peace, what up? Y'all know who the super villain is. The Stores and the Static, stay tuned. Yeah, we got a new album out. Uh, just dropped uh, a couple days ago. You know, it's called Mmm Food, for those that don't know, on uh, Rhyme Shares Entertainment. Um, you know, typical stuff you could expect from a villain. Beats and rhymes, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of humor. I don't want to spoil it. Y'all go check it out and, you know, we'll definitely be satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Right on. If you are the super villain, who's your nemesis? Who's the superhero? The superhero? There's, some, there's various different superheroes out there, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't necessarily call them my nemesis. They're just the antithesis of, of doom, you know what I mean? So, you know, I could, you know, maybe I get along with him. It's not necessarily like he's my enemy. He's just him, uh, the, the, the hero. And the hero could vary. It's, just, it's whoever is playing that role, you know what I'm saying? The cool guy, the one with the chain, the one with the, the, the fancy car. I guess he would be the, the hero, you know what I'm saying? When we the villain, you know what I mean? This, you know, I'm personally, I make beats. This guy makes beats, you know. A lot of people who watch the show mess around. Mm-hmm. You want to, like, talk a little bit about what you use for those who don't know or, like, what you're hitting on? What's your favorite pieces? If yeah. they don't know, yeah, yo, it varies. It's like once I use one piece, master it. You know, I'll go on to the next one. All of them are um, definitely useful. We started out um, HR sixteen. Is that what it is? The um, Alessis machine. Yeah. You got the drum machine, but then you got the sequence that you get with it. Yeah. The drum I sounds in that right. bad boy yeah. is crazy. It's like the first machine where you could um, change the tunes. Like this drum machine, you can change the tune. Not the first, but the, the amount of drum sounds they had in that machine was crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. The ways you be tweaking. So we started with that um, on the sampling tip, FZ1, FZ10 was the rack mount version of that. A uh, good sample, it had different um, filters and, and whatnot in there that was real, real nice and user friendly. Uh, we had that sequence by the um, MPC60 at first. That's why I got into all my kind machines. Joyce is crazy with the sequence of capabilities of all the kind of machines level. You know what I mean? Um, then we graduated, of course, to the 3000 and the 2000 and the 2000XL. Went through all of those. Right now, I'd say my favorite, my baby. I got put onto this joint by Madlib and um, JD and the, um, what you call it, the 303. SP 303. 300 hour machine. Light as a motherfucking, probably light as this microphone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, it's a real ill, Ill machine. 32 sec- thirty-two minutes of sampling time in there. Um, real clean sound, but it's still rough and raw. The way you get a uh, gate uh, or, or like loop real easy on there. Real, like three knobs just to use. Real simple. Strip down of all the bullshit. This way I get a good um, a good live feel. Anything I want to do live, I capture that live feel. I don't even use the sequencer on there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, like when your fans listen to your stuff, you know, they hear something different, definitely. You know, um, I don't know if you want to put labels on it. You know, people say like it's mainstream, underground, you know, commercial, whatever, independent. Like what kind of experiences have you had that kind of like led you to kind of follow that route? Like, Well, I don't know. It's like really just something. We just do the music, you know what I'm saying? And keep it pure from the heart, you know what I mean? It, it, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on how much money it's making, whether it gets categorized as underground or mainstream, you know. Um, at this point, it's just, it's just, you know, we just keep it raw. And right now it's categorized as underground, but I'm sure as it picks up, it's going to pass that line, that 500,000 mark or whatever it is, and it'll be considered mainstream. Like when Biggie first came out, it was straight underground, party and bullshit. I remember hearing that shit on nothing but underground stations, you know what I'm saying? We'll never hear that shit on the radio. But then uh, he kept his style really rugged, same way he had it. But then somewhere along the line, he passed into the mainstream. So it's, it's all going to matter how many records you sell, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if it's raw, it's raw. You know what I mean? All right, so what really happened in the lab that day? In the lab that day? Yeah, man, it's hard to, it's hard to really uh, explain it, you know, on TV and all that. But, uh, nah, nah, don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. Chill, chill, chill. All right, all right, all right. That's the screen, the screen, the screen. I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't shit, disclose. On that note, my time is up. I got to go. So. Right.